Hi guys, so I thought I would show you some examples of gifts that I got from the thrift store this past week. Um, yeah, and hopefully this will serve as just some inspiration to you guys um, for things you can look for while you are thrifting. And yeah, maybe get some good gifts for people at a lower cost and you're also recycling. So yeah, let's do it. Since obviously it's thrifted, you probably won't be able to find the same exact things. Um, but yeah, maybe it'll give you some interest into other categories that you maybe didn't think of before. So. I would like to start out with some really easy ones, um, and that is scarves. Scarves are so easy because you don't have to worry about someone's size. I mean, they're cute. Like, <laughs> I always look for ones that have really cute colors or really neutral colors because then you know they'll kind of go with everything. Um, or I always look for like a cool like crochet pattern. Those are always nice or like a really chunky one. I usually just go for big and long. <laughs> and so here is an example of one that I got as a for a gift and this is actually part of our giveaway as well and I'll be talking about our giveaway on Rhinestone at the end of the video so stay tuned if you want to know how to enter. So this is an example of a scarf that I got for a gift. I think the colors are neutral enough but it also is pretty trendy in the colors that it has and it was in really good shape. It was basically brand new and yeah I love giving scarves as gifts because like I said if you don't really know someone I think they're really just a easy thing to grab and like who doesn't love another scarf, you know what I mean? And then segueing from scarves, another good thing is gloves or mittens. These are also part of the giveaway. Um, but yeah, I just got these cute little knit gloves and these ones are brand new. If I'm gonna get someone gloves, I would um, prefer that they have tags on them still. And yeah, they're just super cute. Um, next thing in kind of a similar realm to scarves, um, ponchos. I think they get overlooked a lot. Sweaters as well, but I'll talk about sweaters in a minute. And if like maybe you don't know somebody's size and you don't want to ask or whatever it is, um, I think ponchos are a really cool gift. And personally, I find quite a few of them at the thrift. And yeah, I found this one here. This was actually in my last thrift haul. I promise some of this stuff is new. But yeah, so I found this one. And yeah, it's just a one size fits most poncho. So it's so much easier for you to guess if it'll work for somebody than like a shirt or a sweater or even pants. Um, and this one is pretty much brand new too. It doesn't have the tag, but it has the tag hook on it still. Um, but I just thought this one was so cute and like this nice gray color, I think will be really appealing to most people. So yeah, I think a poncho is like a cool thing to look for as well. So let's move into sweaters. So sweaters, I think are always a great gift. I think it's a lot easier to find somebody's size for like a knit sweater than it is to find their size for like a t-shirt or a dress or something a little bit more um more fitted or what have you first that i got um i got this one here this was also in my last thrift haul sorry um but i got this baby blue one here and i just grabbed it because it was brand new with tags and it was super cute the color is not really my thing, so I figured, well, and it's also not my size, so I figured, well, I'll pass it along. It is just so cute, and yeah, it's nice to kind of give sweaters to, especially in the winter, because um, it's cold. And another sweater I got is this little one, and I yeah, I just think it's cute. It's, I think, vintage, yeah, it has a vintage tag on it. It was only a few dollars, and yeah, I'm excited about this one. This one does have... Um, some pilling to it so I'm going to show you guys how I remove that um, two different ways and just make them look like new again so yeah we'll go ahead and do that all right so this angles okay I know it's not great sorry um, so if you have a sweater that has some pilling on it super normal to find um, at the thrift especially but you can make them look like new again so this one I ran through the wash uh, I'm gonna take off the tag because I forgot to do that first um, so I ran through the wash already so she's nice and clean. Um, and then uh, two different ways that you can remove pills is you can actually buy a pill remover. Um, this was like $14 at Target, so you can get one of these. Um, if you don't have one of those or you don't want to get one, um, you can also just use a razor, one that's you know like made for your legs or whatever that looks like this. Um, and this will also work. I do think the machine works a little bit better in my opinion. So I wouldn't say that you absolutely need to get one of these, but I would recommend it if you know, you're gonna be doing a lot of sweaters or I kind of just like to have it around the house since I thrift for my own wardrobe. It's nice to have this and be able to use it. So after the sweater's been cleaned, I'm just gonna lay it all out and I'm going to take my lint roller, or I guess this is a lint brush more so, and I'm just gonna remove 
any other hairs and things that might be on. I'll show you with the razor. Um, so really all you do is you just run right over the pills. So you can see all of this came off and it's just loose threads. It doesn't necessarily mean a sweater is old um, or anything like that. It happens, you know, it can happen on the first wash depending on the material of your sweater. And it's just something normal that totally happens through the life of a sweater. This, you can also use the machine and I'll show you just over here. And this will also just suck up the pills so you won't have to like brush them off after. This is how the sweater ended up looking in the end. And yeah, I think it just looks so crisp and clean and just ready to be gifted. And now let's talk about some home goods because home goods are always a good option. Another cool thing that I look for is candle holders and especially like candle stick holders. If you know the person likes candles, if not, give them candles in the holders as well, please. Um, but these are two that I found and I thought they were just really unique. I love the shapes on them and everything. And yeah, I have a whole bunch of t these tall candles from our DIY in this video. And so I thought, well, I should just pick up some holders mostly to show you guys, but also probably to give to somebody. I don't know who's gonna get these yet, but I just think they are so cute. And I love like the clear color of them too. I think it'll go with anyone's home decor that way. And you don't have to worry about mismatching um, what they might already have in their home. The first thing we're gonna try is we're gonna try to make these like really trendy bendy candles. Um, these are like some examples here. Um, and yeah, supposedly it's very easy. I don't know if it's actually gonna be that easy. So I got this bag of candles and I'm just hoping that some of them work um, and we will just find out together. All right, so the first time that I attempted this, I tried having the water in like a big cup and tried putting the candles in there, but it was just cooling off too fast. And so what I found worked better is to put them in the sink in hot water and then in like five, 10 minutes, add more hot water to just like keep it hot. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So I put them all in there and then you kind of just let them soak. I set a timer for 10 minutes. So I'll come back and add some more hot water and see if they've gotten bendier at all. It's nice because you can tell right away if the candle is going to work or not. Um, they will, f you'll be able to tell that it is squishy. <laughs> um, so I just tested it and it looks like the purple ones at least so far are going to work. So I'm going to grab whatever is ready, bring them over here and then show you kind of how I bend and we'll go from there. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it and kind of flatten it a little bit. So I'm kind of just winging it. As you can see, they get really soft and it's pretty easy to bend them. Just be careful not to bend too far or you'll get little cracks and things and that is really hard to fix. Once you have the designs that you like, um, all you have to do to finish them off is just put them in cool water and let them sit for a little while until they get hard back again. Candle reveal it is. Um, so these actually worked out so good. I literally did not expect this. And now I have so many twisted candles that I don't know what to do with. Um, so yeah, but 
<laughs> I have this guy here. Um, I'll just show you like some good shots of them. Um, but I have these two lavender ones that I think turned out really good. White one. And then I twisted this yellow one and this pink one. And I think they turned out so cute. And then this other pink one, both of the pinks were from my very first attempt. So it has this little like bendy dude in it and I think it's kind of cool, but <laughs> yeah, I think these would make really cool gifts. You could bundle like a few like, you know, similar colors together or something. And I think that that would just be really cute. We can also repurpose candles. So let's insert that DIY here. This is repurposing old candles into new candles. So this is super, super easy. Um, you don't need much at all. <laughs> um, you need some broken candles. I have two broken ones that I'm gonna use. So I have these, uh, this blue one, and then I also have a bunch of old little tea light candles. You can also take like the very last bit out of um, a candle that like can't burn through anymore. Um, so yeah, any of those like repurposed ones, you can find like an ugly one at the thrift store and chop it up. Um, what you're gonna do is chop up all the little bits. It'll melt faster if they're smaller pieces. Um, so I have that here. And then you'll wanna put it in a glass jar and then you'll need a uh, pan for on the stove or a pot for on the stove. So once you have your pot um, of water, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring the water to a boil and you're gonna put those glass jars inside. I have an old candle that I can't get the last bit of the wax out. And then I have another candle that I just got from the thrift store that I just wanted to reuse and I think I can make it cuter. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of show you guys the process. I'm combining wax from two different candles. Um, I'm gonna pour both the waxes into one jar just so that they can evenly mix. And so be really careful with this step. I am using my oven mitt to grab the glass because it's gonna be and there is that. And this one still has a lump in it, but that is okay, because I'm going to melt what's in this jar again. Anyway, so I'm gonna pop this back on to the stove, and then I'm gonna bring that to a boil again so that they mix. The candles I'm remaking, I wanna use this jar for, because might as well. Um, I am now just cleaning out the rest of that little wax gunk in here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and peel off these stickers. So now that I have a nice clean jar, I'm gonna just give it a real good wash with soap and my sponge and make sure any residue is off. A little about this size, um, you'll wanna have probably three wicks in order to melt it um, evenly while you burn it. So I have these three wick strings here that are from an old broken long candle, taper candle. Um, I just pulled it out and cut it into threes. So I'm gonna be using those. Just using a little bit of hot glue just to stick the wicks down to the bottom of the jar. I am taking a little bit of masking tape and I'm going to just kind of put it Stick it to the very top. This way they won't fall into the wax at least. So pretty much all of that wax on the stove has melted now. So I'm going to grab my oven mitt again and I'm going to just pour directly into this pot here. And then I'm going to just set it back on the stove so I can rearrange the wicks and how we want them to dry. Now I'm just going to set this aside and we'll let it cool. This is how my repurposed candles came out. So I repurposed this one here and it smells really, really good still. And so this had um, about like a centimeter left of the orange candle that was originally in this. And so I took, I melted all of that orange out and then melted it with a bunch of uh, white wax from broken candles that I had or um, ugly thrifted candles that I had and I put in the new wicks and now she is a brand new candle and I am so excited and yeah I could easily just um, 
and tie a little ribbon around this and gift it to somebody. And I think that that would be so cute and it still has that gorgeous scent to it also. Because you can do it with anything. Um, you could find like a souvenir mug and put a candle in that. And I think it's obviously really cool to repurpose uh, candles as well. So another like little glassware item that I will look for too is little catch-all dishes. Um, I did find quite a few. I found a really cool one, but I don't want to show you because it's for my friend and I don't want her to see it before I give it to her. Um, so I'm just showing you um, a few that I already have that I thrifted a really long time ago. Um, so I have this little guy here and it just has these cute little cherubs on it. Both of these are mine, but they um, really come in handy. In here I keep like all my big hairpins and my wig caps and things like that. And I just think that these are so easy to gift because like the person can do literally anything they want with it. And it's just super cute and it's cool to like pick out a design special for somebody too. And then here's another one I have um, and it is this little like Pyrex thing. It's definitely for like holding sugar or something for coffee, um, but I hold my butterfly clips in it. <laughs> but yeah, same here, like the person can just do whatever they want with it and I think that is so unique and it just adds that little like personal touch too when you're gifting it to somebody. Another home good item, blankets. I love blankets and throw blankets are amazing gifts. Um, they're really awesome because it's like you don't have to know somebody's bed size like you're not buying them a full comforter or anything and just a throw blanket like it doesn't have to be super you know super detailed or anything like that um, for it to be special and I think like most people especially here in the Midwest um, have throw blankets on their couches and things like that um, just to stay warm in their own homes. So um, I think those are always good gifts. And yeah, so I find a lot of these crochet ones at the thrift and I do have two of them on my Depop right now if you are looking, um, so it'll plug there. But I have them all over my house. I love them. I think they make really cool gifts too because they are so unique. And again, you can be like, oh my God, like I found this crochet blanket in various shades of your favorite color. Um, and I think that's super cool. And same thing, you could just kind of tie a cute little ribbon around them and, you know, wrap it if you want and it just looks so good. Especially if you have a friend that loves vintage stuff, this is excellent. Um, if you have someone that likes more modern things, you can also find blankets for them too, of course. Um, so I found this one. This actually is a brand new Target uh, blanket and I was so excited to find this. And it literally is brand new, has the tags on it. and. Like, look at that color. The colors are so neutral um, that it'll just go with everything. Um, and yeah, it's just so good. It's so cute and it's so incredibly soft and it's brand new. Um, I'm gonna ring it through the wash machine, of course, just, you know, for safety, but it is just so good. Like, and again, like neutral colors. I know the color scheme of the home that this is going to, and I think it'll just go so well. And someone could throw it on their couch or on their bed, of course. And yeah, like who doesn't love a lo like a super fuzzy blanket for the winter time? Another houseware item I like to look for is cups. And I like to look for sets of cups, like two matching cups or whatever. And I think getting like cool little tiki cups or martini glasses or something like that is super fun and unique. And yeah, it's like, um, you don't have to feel weird because you're not buying like them a whole new dish set. Cause you know, you don't want to feel weird and then have them be like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to use it. Or like <laughs> they don't match all, all the other stuff we have or something like that. Um, but I think you can definitely find like some cool amber glass cups or things like that that will match most people's decor. Um, you know, hopefully you kind of know what they have too and that'll help. Of course, find um, like printed cups that have, you know, like pop culture on them or something like that. And I think people always love to receive those as well. Um, here's some examples. These um, first, this first two pairs here are ones that I have in my own home. So I have these and then these cool little amber glass ones. They're actually plastic. I don't know, I don't know if I'd gift them. Like, um, I mean, they're pretty beat up now, but <laughs> um, if they were in better condition, especially if they were glass, I would totally gift these. I think they are so cute. And I think they're a perfect size too, where someone can put like a little cocktail drink in there or some whiskey or I don't know, some eggnog or something. Um, I think they're perfect for that. And then another pair of neutral, um, of a neutral op option that I found are these cute little like, I don't know what, like 
I guess it's a wine glass, but it's pretty small. So <laughs> something in between. Um, but yeah, I think the color is just perfect. It'll just match most people's homes and they just look so bougie. And yeah, they're just so cute. I think these are a really good option. This other pair that I found um, are so freaking cute. And <laughs> I am so excited to give these to my friend. Um, yeah, <laughs> they are these lime green hand, they're like totally hand blown, I think, because they're different sizes and they, yeah, they look hand blown. Um, they got all these wild little bubbles in them too. And I just love that they're like this acid green color. I think they're gonna love them. And yeah, they're just, I mean, they're so rad. Like, <laughs> they're seriously so cool. And I know that their home decor and things like that will totally go with these. So I, I am not worried about them liking them. <laughs> Let's talk about some games, games and books. Um, I personally am not a huge book person, so I don't really know what I'm looking for when it comes to books. Um, but I have two thrifted ones here that I thought were pretty cool and that I'd share with you guys. Um, I think if you're buying someone a book and you don't know exactly what they want, I think it's cool to find something that's like one of those toilet books, you know, that you want to read like while you're sitting on the toilet um, or just like to have in like a magazine rack or something to look cool. Um, just got some cool pictures in it or something like that. Um, so this one here, it's called Blab Fantagraphics and it just, I, I wish I knew more about it. I should just look up the artist and see, but it's got like these little comics and then like these crazy like illustrations and things like that. So I think this would be a really cool gift for someone that's like maybe into art or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I love this thing. I've just like had it around, but it is super cool. And then this other one I found is called The Devil's Dictionary, and I just grabbed it because I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but it has, it literally is just a dictionary. <laughs> They're just random, I don't know. And it's kind of funny, like, they talk about beards and magnets and income and frying pans. Like, they have a <laughs> definition for everything, and it's all kind of, like, got a little twist to it. So and this is kind of a funny read, too. This is also something I would call, like, a toilet read or something. And then let's talk about games. So I picked up this one because it was brand new. It's still sealed and you can find brand new games and brand new puzzles and things like that in the thrift as well. Um, but yeah, I grabbed this one. It's like a trivia game about nerdy stuff. And I don't like, I don't think I would be very good at this um, personally, but I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just grabbed it. I think somebody will like it. It was originally $24 at Kowalski's, so we know that much. Another really good idea is puzzles too. Of course, you wanna make sure that all of the pieces are there or it'll be very disappointing. So if it's still sealed, then I think you're good to go or get it ahead of time and do the puzzle to make sure it's all there. Um, but I think those are also cool ideas, especially in like this COVID time. It is a cool activity to like give to somebody. I think puzzles and board games are really good gifts, especially right now. And yeah, you know, bring a little household together, you know? That I wanna mention are um, getting people Christmas themed things. So I've always been like on the fence about getting people Christmas themed stuff because I'm like, well, you're gonna get it on Christmas and then you're not gonna see it for another year but I had a slight epiphany. Um, so I've, I've seen quite a few like Christmas salt shakers and things like that and Christmas hand towels and stuff like that. And I actually think that those would make really good gifts. Um, that way, you know, if you get someone like a hand towel and then like you go back and like they're not using it in their bathroom because maybe it clashed with their decor or like what have you, like you might feel kind of bad about it. But if you give them a Christmas hand towel and they don't have one, they're gonna bust it out every Christmas. So um, here's an example of one that I found. Um, and this I actually just got for myself. So this is just at my home, but I just thought it was super cute and everything in my kitchen is super like kind of vintagey. And so I thought he would just fit in during the Christmas season so well. Um, but yeah, with towels, throw them in the wash and then fold them up real nice and iron them and they're like good as new. So I'm gonna show you how I would prep this little guy and just make him look real cute and crisp. Um, it would be really easy to use an iron on this, um, but I do not have an iron because my lifestyle just doesn't allow it. Um, instead, I have a steamer because they're much faster. They kind of do the same thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna be using my steamer for this guy, but also you could totally just use an iron and get it really crisp.
so once you get all of the main wrinkles out, um, I'm gonna go ahead and fold him up, but since those cute little bears in the middle, I'm gonna try to just fold it in like thirds so that he is in the center as he should be. And I'm just gonna go ahead and press right on the creases there to just make him real crisp. And then I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the back side as well. And yeah, and then, you know, every time they decorate for Christmas, they'll have a new piece that they're gonna bring out every year. Another good idea is ornaments. Um, I try to find kind of unique ornaments when I'm looking at the thrift, because um, everyone has, you know, uh, Christmas bulbs and things like that. So look for something a little unique. Maybe like something that looks like the person is kind of fun. And same thing then, every Christmas they're gonna bust it out and you don't have to worry about like if they're actually using it. Um, same with like some salt and pepper shakers. If you can find some really cute Christmas ones, I think those are good gifts too. Um, even if they just, you know, put them out on display for Christmas, I think that is still a really good gift. And then they're not like weirdly pressured into using it or something. <laughs> Now let's talk about uh, what to put gifts into that you can get at the thrift store. Some jars, uh, they make good gift holders. Um, so like I picked up this simple little mason jar. It's kind of hard for me to find them with the lids at the thrift store, they're usually missing. But I got this one, so I picked him up and this would just be such an easy thing to like fill up with like hot chocolate powder or some little like brownie mix or something like that and give it as a little stocking stuffer. I think that would be super cute. And I think having like a real reusable jar is nice too, rather than just a package. And it makes it look a little bougier too, let's be honest. Um, and then another one I picked up is this one here that has this cool little latch thing. And I thought this would be really great for bath salts. And I love gifting bath salts because it's so easy to like mix scents together that you like, put in some flowers and things like that. And yeah, I just think also having it in a jar is so nice and convenient rather than like having one of those big Epsom salt bags or something like that. This just keeps it all in one little jar and I think it's cute and it looks a little bit fancier if you put it in a jar too. And then this one, I also custom painted and I haven't decided who I'm gonna give this to yet, but when I do, I'm gonna paint their name on this little um, seafoam green background that I painted on there as well. So I think that's also a really nice touch. You can kind of personalize it. So my go-to is always baskets. I love baskets. I think that they just serve so many purposes um, outside of, you know, what you might immediately think. And so I love to put gifts in baskets. So here's an example of one basket that I picked up and it is just this really simple, like really commonly seen wicker basket. I liked this one because it didn't have a handle and I liked the rectangle shape of it too. Right, sorry, my camera died. So hopefully um, I was done talking about that basket. <laughs> um, but here is an example of another basket I picked up. I liked this one because it was this cool white color and then it has this little plaque in the front too. So they can, they can totally use it after they take their gifts out, um, you know, store something in it and like write like a title or label or something on it too. I think that's a fun idea. I wanted to show you guys a few different examples on how I would pack a really cute uh, gift basket. And yeah, this is definitely not how I'm actually wrapping these items for myself and uh, for who I'm giving these as gifts to. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of inspiration and show you um, some cute little ways to package. Um, I'm also gonna be using a few goodies that are gonna be in our rhinestone giveaway. So I'll be talking about that at the very end, but if you wanna see a little peek, I'll have a bunch of them in this little cute montage just to kind of, you know, inspire you, give you a few ideas maybe. Till the end and you'll see everything that's in the giveaway and how to enter.
These last two baskets that I'm putting together are going to be the items you will win in the giveaway if you win. So if you want to enter, here's how. We are hosting it over on our Rhinestone Flea Market page, so you can go look at the giveaway post there if you need more directions or anything like that, but I'm also going to tell you how right now. Um, all you have to do, subscribe to me on YouTube here and to Brooke on YouTube as well, and then follow us both on Instagram and then go over to the rhinestone page and comment on our giveaway post and that enters you and you just have to take a friend take two friends whatever it's unlimited entry so if you want to enter a hundred times feel free um all you have to do to get re-entered is to just comment on that post again so um yeah i'm gonna show you guys what we're doing uh putting them together so the first basket will be in this basket and i will send this to you the second basket i haven't found i want to find one about this size again so i just haven't found the vessel that it's going to be in uh, but i will go ahead and make it look cute in this one just for the sake of the video uh, but everything in the baskets are what the items you will win uh if you win of course so <laughs> we're having two winners winner is going to be announced next tuesday uh, i believe that's the 22nd and that'll be announced over on our Instagram page on Rhinestone Flea Market. So go follow us there for all of the updates and go enter if you want to win some cute little goodies. So.